Hey, Bulls and Bears, my name is JJ. You're watching Bull Boom Bear Bust. Back with another dose of economic reality. This time, rents fall, evictions rise. Now, we've been tracking this, and in 2020, we saw something that had never happened prior. We saw moratoriums and uh, eviction moratoriums and freeze, freezing of rents. N never had been done on that level prior this was nationwide it was in a lot of la larger cities and this caused an unprecedented rise in rents so now the opposite is happening rents are falling we're going to talk about the numbers here in just a moment but let's put this into perspective and let's think about this right so first of all as a landlord if you're not collecting rent from several of your tenants uh, what are you going to do? Are you going to just take the loss and possibly file bankruptcy? Or are you going to try to raise the rents on people that are paying? Well, that's part of it. Also, when you have people squatting in a residence, I'll use the word squatting here. When you have people still living in a residence that are not paying rent, that creates an artificial shortage. Because normally, if you're not paying the rent, you're out of there. Simple stuff, right? So that causes artificial scarcity Normally, you'd have a bunch of new properties, a bunch of new apartments, a bunch of new homes coming onto the market when people can't pay the rent, when they can't pay the rent. Normally, they're out of there. So now you have people that are not out of there. They stay in the residence, even though they're not paying rent. Artificial scarcity, right? Supply, demand, really simple, right? So you've got the artificial scarcity. You've got the loss of income to the landlords. And on top of that, there's a lot of levels of this. On top of that, you had all the stimulus that was sent out in 2020, the enhanced unemployment benefits. The, uh, the stimmies, as we call them, stimmies. And that gave people an artificial boost to their income. And what did people do with it? They went out and they leased apartments. They used it for down payments on cars. We saw the car prices jump up. Uh, basically, we saw everything jump up. We saw demand surge during those times. Well, now some things are starting to come down, including housing and also in rent. Here's out of entrepreneur.com. Rents are starting to fall across the U.S., and they're set to drop even more in 2023. So good news looking if for those looking for a lower cost of living and deflation somewhere. We told you this was going to happen. Rents are coming down even more. Uh, some renters are already signing cheaper leases across the country. And they could drop further in 2023. Just reading out of this article here, an excerpt. As demand slows and the number of available apartments ramps up, prices are going down. That's the key there, right? The number of apartments available is increasing because people are now having to get out. Uh, it's simple. And I did a search here for rise in evictions, and I got results across dozens of different states. And I couldn't even go through all the results because pretty much everywhere you look, evictions are on the rise. Uh, let's just start here with a few of the articles here. So here's one out of a D.C. Um, outlet here. Without health crisis protections... Evictions in the region are ticking up. Another one here out of uh, Planetizen. Eviction rise, evictions rise in Phoenix. Landlords in the Arizona metropolitan areas filed the most evictions since 2008. And that was uh, last month there, the month of October. Um, evictions on the rise in Texas. That's out of CBS here. Miami-Dade down in Florida. Evictions surpass pre-pandemic levels. No surprise, this was all pent up, so it was bound to explode and surge after the protections ended, and now rents are falling accordingly. Uh, LA Times, LA to extend eviction protections, right? So this depends on where you look. So rents in LA are likely not going to come down like they are in some of these other areas. Uh, of course, leave it to Los Angeles to be the uh, anomaly here. All right, we go up to Michigan, M Live here. Homelessness population grows. Uh, eviction moratoriums end in many cities. Wow. So this is the beginning. And it's not just going to be a seasonal dip in rents. Like usually each year we do see a slight dip in the fall and winter because demand slows down in those seasonal, uh, in those months. But this is going to be, I think, continuous throughout 2023 unless, <laughs> there's always an unless, unless they re-implement another massive uh, nationwide or in many cities new eviction moratorium, right? So we're going to see how this goes. No one wants to see people lose the roof over their head and no one wants to see people living on the streets. I mean, unless you're really mean or cruel, I don't think most of us want to see that anyways. 
but at the same time prices are elevated and it's going to be better in the long run if prices start to come down closer to what people uh, can afford but i think it's going to be too little too late because people are in so much debt right now uh, that even the lower rent costs are not going to be enough to offset uh, the high cost of living that people have already suffered under and uh, these debt levels and the high cost of living in other areas that are not coming down the cost of fuel cost of energy especially when you look at fuel for heating your home uh, those prices not coming down so much so uh, it's going to get even more interesting uh, this year and into 2023 that's for sure all right now let's talk about a, a different aspect of high rents that i really haven't heard too many people talk about and that's the consolidation of so many people into cities right so when you look across the united states when you look at the u.s as a whole most of the population are in metropolitan areas so we have all these people crammed into metropolitan areas and therefore in these metropolitan areas you see rents much higher than you do out in the country because that's where the jobs are that's where the demand is um, it's where the people that are at where the most jobs are because we have a service sector economy so where more people are living you have more shopping you have more spending in those areas so naturally that's where most jobs are at so, right? so you can have this consolidation of jobs of people in metropolitan areas and that's also going to cause a surge in prices and if you go out to the country you're going to see lower prices. Here's an example. I have a relative who lives in a very small town up in Oregon. The name of the city is called Bonita. And it's just east of, I think it's about 60 miles east of Eugene. I'm not sure exactly, but I know it's east of Eugene. And it's a very small city, very small town. And her rent is like $5.35 a month. Of course, it's a small one-bedroom apartment. She doesn't, have, she doesn't have a family, so she can get into a small place like 950 square feet. But just an example, that same apartment in Portland or even Eugene might be twice as much. And uh, that's what we have. We have all these people condensed, consolidated into these cities, creating, um, you know, just cr crazy expensive uh, rents. Look at New York, where even a loft is going to cost you a couple thousand dollars a month in some cases. Or I shouldn't say a loft. Actually, the more fitting term would be a studio apartment. Here's an article here out of Business Insider New York's. Uh, New York City's smallest apartment has no bathroom and its renter shares one in the hall with neighbors, even with no bathroom. Um, a 95 square foot East Village apartment, uh, this person pays $1,100 a month. This is called a micro studio. It's basically a uh, glamorized closet, right? There's actually walk in closets in homes that I've seen bigger than this. Uh, Business Insider, I'll link to that. But the average apartment rent is $4,000 a month in Manhattan. Completely insane. But this is what happens. We have so many people packed into one area. We know that New York is people stacked on top of each other, all these high rises. So naturally, rents are going to be higher, right? Uh, that's it for this one here. Let me know what you think about the falling rents, the rise in evictions. Is the end of the eviction moratorium going to be a good thing? And uh, what do you think about L.A.? It still has the eviction moratorium in place. Uh, per the LA Times up until uh, February. And I think they're probably going to extend it again past that. Wouldn't be surprised, right? All right, so let's put this out there and like to hear from you. What do you think? How far are rents going to come down before the end of the year? Just a couple months left. I'm thinking between small 1% and 4%. Next year, 2023, by the end of the year, I think it's going to be closer to a 10% decline. And remember, prices on the way down, a 10% decline is bigger than on the way up. So think about this, when rents double, let's say they go from 1,000 to 2,000, that's a 100% increase. But then the decline to get back from 2,000 down to 1,000, back to where they were, that's only a 50% decline. So declines on the way down are much more uh, impactful than on the way up. You guys understand that? Uh, let me know what you think down in the comments. How far will rents decline before the end of the year? And then in 2023, I'd like to hear from you on this one down in comments. Thanks everybody for watching. Please like, subscribe, help out this channel if you like what we talk about. Until next time, bye for now. Keep stacking and peace. Later.